Hello, everybody. It's Karen McLaughlin here, certified personal trainer in Hamilton, Ontario. Here once again with you for my Tuesdays at 2 p.m. Facebook Live broadcast. And this week, I'm really happy because I'm going to be talking about one of my very favorite topics, which is feet. And this isn't the first time I've talked about feet, but I thought, you know, I haven't talked, managed to restrain myself from really talking about feet too much for a while. And it's summer, and the title for today was Summertime Equals Playtime for Your Feet. And I thought this is the perfect time of year to really go back and uh, talk about feet a little bit more. I did do a whole fairly lengthy Facebook Live sometime back in the winter, I believe, all of it. It was called Your Feet or Your Foundation, and you can find that on my YouTube channel if you didn't get a chance to watch or hear me live on that one. And so there's lots of important information there about why our, why foot health is so important and why we should care about this stuff. So I'm not going to repeat myself endlessly. Um, there is one thing that I want to get out of the way because I don't want to forget to do it later. And it's my little public serv service announcement um, for any of you who just cut in for a second and then take off. Flip-flops are not your friend. I know you guys aren't going to like me saying this. I know you, I know. <laughs> I was a chronic flip-flop user for many, many, many years. Practically lived in them all summer. These puppies are so bad for your feet, guys, and then so then by extension for the bad for the rest of you. So please ditch the flip-flops or any any shoe-like or sandal-like footwear that does not attach at the back. Um, so anything that it slides, like uh, any type of shoe that's like a slide or a slip-on, with no nothing that grabs around your heel slash ankle. Sorry, gang, they're no good. Um, they affect um, the musculature of your foot poorly, and um, they can impact your gait, how you walk, adversely as well. So if you'd like some suggestions on some really barefooty kind of sandals that it would be more appropriate, better for foot health, I'd be happy to give you some suggestions. Um, I'm not going to do that right now because um, it's kind of going a little bit outside of the scope of what I want to talk about today. Um, which is really since the weather is great and the days are longer, um, to really take advantage of this time of year, to really let, let your feet, like I said in the title, play around a bit and explore different textures. Um, before I go going much more, I just want to put a caveat on that, which is that while what I'm going to say is appropriate for most people, nothing is appropriate for everybody. And so if you have diagnosed foot health problems, or if you're diabetic, um, or perhaps there may be some other health issues as well that may, may not be, this advice may not be appropriate for you. So going forward, I just want to say, um, you need to take 100% responsibility for your decision to use this information or not. Because um, like I said, it may not be for you. I can't know that for sure. So if you're not sure, check with your healthcare professional. And if you do decide to um, give it a whirl, you do need to take responsibility because of course, walking around barefoot on stuff has the potential for injury any type of exercise or movement has the potential for injury. So yes, walking barefoot could potentially result in you cutting your foot or stabbing your foot, you know, injury to your foot. Um, and, and so, you know, you have to just realize it's your decision by going barefoot to take that risk, okay? So now that we've got that out of the way, why is this important in the first place? Well, um, as many of you know, I'm a big fan of Katie Bowman, who is a biomechanist, and she's a real advocate for um, making sure that we look after the health of our feet. And she says that uh, the foot's, each of your feet has 
33 different joints. And so she calculates that that allows for each foot to take on, and get this, 8.6 times 10 to the 36 um, unique different positions. That's a lot. I know I'm not, I'm no mathematician, but that's like about a zillion or so positions. So the point here is that your, um, your feet were meant to kind of literally get bent out of shape. Like we've stuck them into a shoe where they really can't move. And that's not what they were meant for. And so now they've gotten really stiff and um, tight. And this is affecting us because your foot health is a major contributor to your overall well-being and health of your whole body. So the foot's ability to deform um, is actually a method of <clears throat> data collection for our body. We were meant to walk on stuff barefoot and then that was going to give us input as to our environment. So we've really lost that um, because we've put our foot into shoes, our feet into shoes, and so what happens is they're very isolated most of the time. You've got a pretty thick sole on your shoe, and so it's very isolated from the environment you're walking on. And um, not only that, but it's also in a continuously um, almost identical environment from one minute to the next. You know, your shoe, your foot in the shoe, and your foot's probably in a sock inside the shoe. And so it's kind of encased in this little stable environment that is basically unchanging. And so your foot's not getting much stimulation. And so then what happens is your brain is going, nothing much seems to be going on down there. It's just, it's always the same, always the same thing going on. So then your nerves actually um, work less to perceive what's going on down there. It actually like shut, says, well, it's not really, it's always the same, so we don't need to pay such close attention to what's going on down there. And so you're basically, you're turning off to a large degree what, what is meant to be this extremely rich um, source of stimulation and like feedback about what's going on. And so your feet just really are not functioning at anywhere near their normal capability. So, and so then what happens is your feet, um, they're not being used the way they're meant to be. They're getting really stiff, they're getting really tight. And then that causes your center of mass and your pelvis to also get more rigid um, and immobile. And so then that just leads to more and more um, problems throughout your body um, leads to like unsteadiness, um, unbalanced movement, lurching, that kind of, and just like really rigid movement, not natural, relaxed, flowing movement. So we don't want that. Um, so this is why I want to tell you <laughs> is a great time of the year to give your feet some love by letting them explore a variety of different natural textures. So, what might this look like? Um, what if you, I mean, just even at home, unless you're in an apartment. If you have a house, you probably have a little bit of grass in your yard. Most people have at least a little. I have less and less every year, but I guess I'm going to leave a little bit so I can walk. So, just walking barefoot in the grass can be a first step if you're not used to going barefoot. And, you know, if you're doing it in your backyard, you can be hopefully pretty sure there's nothing uh, to dangerous to step on back there. So even just walking around a bit in your back, in your backyard um, bare feet can be the first step here to explore more texture if you are the type of person who even like puts sandals on to go out in the yard. Just leave them off, walk around in the grass. Um, my husband and I will often walk in the neighborhood park <laughs> in our bare foot in the in our bare feet in the evening because it just feels so good. And uh, depending on what else you have or close by, um, 
You may or may not. Like if you have a, a pea gravel sort of, um, I know that was really in for landscaping for a while. So some people have like um, some areas of their yard that are landscaped in uh, pea gravel, maybe a patio or a walkway or something like that. So if you have any of that handy, that can be awesome to walk on too. It's another different texture. Um, or um, even like larger gravel, which is pretty hardcore though. Like you don't want to, you don't want to start with that stuff if you're not used to it because your feet are going to be screaming at you. So that's like working up to a little bit more advanced. Um, if you're at the beach though, um, often there'll be a few different types of textures for you to play with. So walking on sand is awesome because it really, um, it's a really great workout for your feet because it can assume a lot of different shapes, right? Like sand is always shifting beneath you. So it's really fantastic. Um, and dry sand and wet sand are not the same to walk on either. So you can explore um, both of those different textures. Um, my husband and I were just down at the beach on the weekend and we had a fantastic day. It was beautiful. But before we left in the evening, we just took a like half hour barefoot walk down the beach. And it's surprising how much that works your feet. And even like in your calves and that, things feel different because it's a very different stimulus than walking down uh, a sidewalk in the city in your shoes. So definitely if you have sand around, um, heck, even if your kids have a sandbox, you probably don't want to like walk around in it, but you can, if you're sitting there playing with them, you can like kind of let your feet squish around in it. That'll even uh, give them some stimulation. But beach walking is definitely fantastic. So find some opportunities to do that. Uh, another texture you can often find at the beach, and again, sometimes people have this landscaped in their backyards as well, is like a river rock. So not the sharp rocks, but the softly rounded uh, rocks. Uh, often there will be sort of segments of the beach that have that kind of texture. So that's always great because um, it's, it's not as um, sharp as like a gravel driveway sort of thing. So that's another one to look out for. And um, even just um, when you're walking on a beach, sometimes there'll be things washed up like um, sea, seaweedy types of stuff or where we were walking, there was sort of um, some kind of vine that was growing out of um, areas of the beach. And so those are things that you could walk on to, depending. I mean, if it looks really slimy or disgusting or something, no, or too slippery, then don't, of course. But just looking for opportunities to explore different textures with your feet. Another one that you may or may not, most people don't have this in their backyard, but if you do happen to have an old log lying around, that can be really great to walk on to. Um, the texture of the bark is really interesting. Um, so those are a few ideas. I think that was all the ones that I had. Um, well, actually dirt is another one, like uh, packed, packed dirt, like a nature trail type of, you don't necessarily want to walk down a whole nature trail <laughs> in your bare feet, but you know, if you are vacationing out in the boonies and there's like uh, packed dirt driveways or stuff like that, it's another texture that you can explore. So the basic idea is just to kind of become aware of where there are more different textures available for you to try and walk on when it's appropriate. So I already said there's lots of times when it's not going to be appropriate and I'm like I go barefoot as much as I possibly can but sometimes I can't. So it's just looking for the opportunity but especially when you're you know in the summer when we're more relaxed and we tend to spend more time outdoors and we go on vacations there's probably going to be a lot more opportunities to uh, do this sort of thing than you would find throughout the rest of the year. So 
it's just a great time of year to get into the habit of letting your feet be a bit freer and really letting them explore some new textures. So if you've really not gone barefoot at all much before and you're not used to this sort of thing, it may be a little, <laughs> a little over. I would start with, you know, grass is probably the easiest and then, you know, sand at the beach. Um, and the more rocks and pebbles and that kind of stuff is more for once you when you feel ready, or even the walking on a log with the bark. If you're really not used to barefoot at all, it might be a little bit too much stimulation. So listen to your own body, know what you're ready for. Um, but it it can be uh, really wonderful and fun to explore these different textures and just notice how your feet might feel different if you, you know, ideally it's a great to do this daily, you know, different textures, but just as much as you can and start to notice, do your feet feel any different? You know, do they ache as much? What's happening? Are they, you may notice over the course of a few weeks that what bugged you before because your feet felt so sensitive to it, it, it doesn't bug you anymore and actually feels good. So sometimes it can be like, ah, uh, this is too much at first, and then, which is why, you know, maybe you want to start with just grass if you haven't even done that in a long time. Um, but I'm just like, I can't tell you how great it felt to walk for half an hour on a sandy beach. That was just really heavenly. And, um, you know, the other beach we were at earlier in the week, there was a lot of river rocks, so I was walking on that. And that's definitely a bit more challenging, a bit more stimulating, shall we say, for the feet. But it's really just giving them an opportunity to explore different sensory input that we don't normally let it. And not only the sensory input, but that um, deformation. And um, so it's not just literally about stepping on something, but it's like a, about letting your feet actually be moved into different positions as well, which is why sand can be so great because it really shifts a lot um, while you're walking on it. And the other thing, that goes along with all of these is if you can find any of those different textures and um, a different type of terrain that's not flat that goes along with it so walking uphill or downhill while exploring any of these different textures at the same time that's even bonus because then you're getting into um, different kinds of stimulation as well the ankle and all kinds of stuff like that just more shifting and input and stimulus stimulus which is a good thing okay so if you have any questions about this, let me know. Hopefully <laughs> I've gotten you at least a little bit interested to try and explore some texture on your summer outings. And I really hope you do because I think you'll really notice how beneficial it, it is for your feet. Okay, that is it for me this week. And until then, uh, keep moving. Uh, Stay healthy, and as always, if you have any questions, you can either private message me here on Facebook, leave a comment, or contact me at yourfitnessgroove at gmail.com. And that's it for me until next week. Talk to you then. Bye-bye.